again. Yay! <laughs> Somewhere. Hopefully we're live. Yeah. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of a hole through the end of the arm here and into the body just so I can attach my brass fasteners. You could do this with a hole punch. I'm going crazy here and doing it with an X-Acto knife because, you know, why I not live I on I usually just put it down on the mat and just cut a little line if I can. That works too. Yeah. Less poking. Then I'm just going to put this through both the arm and the body and flip it over and push that brass fastener down so it holds it in place. Then I'm going to move it around a little bit so it actually has a little bit of wiggle. So then we've got one arm. Yay. Very nice. All right. We'll do the same on the other side. Thank you. <laughs> I know you're busy trying to make sure that we're yeah. everywhere we need to be. Double checking everything. Mm-hmm. All right. So we'll do the same thing. Might even swing that one around so it has a little bit more space. Take that brass fastener. Welcome to part two of the video if you're here. Thank you, thank you. If you made it back to us, leave a comment. Two people made it, so. Yay, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. There we go. So we've got our robot with some movable limbs. But that's not the exciting part. The exciting part is being able to get something to light up. Uh, so we're gonna add a circuit to this with a little bit of a switch attached to it. You can see at the middle of my gear uh, thing here, we've got two little dots. I colored over them with my gold metallic marker, so you can't see them very well, but it doesn't matter. We don't need you to be able to see it. I'm gonna take my safety pin and push holes through that. The LED legs will not go through that card stack successfully. So you've got to make sure you give it a path, whether you're using a safety pin or a push pin, that's up to you. And then I am going to use, this one has so much color that I have to use my favorite. I have to use. Oh, yeah. oh I can only guess. You know, <laughs> you know, Pete, I have to use a color changing LED. Now, I know I've talked about this numerous times, um, but if you look at the base of these LEDs that look white, you'll see that this is not a complete circle at the bottom. It does have two flat sides. That's how I know that this is a color changing LED and not a white LED. I can also test that by putting the long leg of the LED on the top of the battery, short leg on the bottom, and then I can actually hold it down to test out the color. Taught my eight-year-old how to test out some LEDs last night. It was riveting. Yeah. He actually really enjoyed himself. That's good. All right, so we're going to use our color changing LED. And since I don't have an actual template on the back, I need to just pay attention to which leg I'm putting where. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll say, put a little bit of a bend in the longer leg. That way, once I'm onto the back side, I know which one is my positive, which one is my negative. For those of you that are unsure, the longer leg is positive, the shorter leg is negative, and that's really important when hooking it up to a circuit. So I'm gonna go with my longer one through the right, but like I said, it doesn't truly, oh, that's gonna look amazing. It doesn't truly matter yet, as long as I know which one is which on the back. All right, so I can see that my longer leg is off to the left right now. Um, and I kind of want my battery down below here with my switch off to a side. So if you look at this one, I've got the switch off to the side here. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to grab from the front and engage. For this one, I actually have the switch on that same side. Uh, it does not truly matter which side. That's completely up to you, but you'll notice I have my short leg going down to the battery, so it's on the underside of the battery. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm gonna have my short negative leg go straight down. And since my longer positive leg is on the left, I'm gonna have the circuit go over to the left. 
I don't want those legs to go across each other because then I'll just sort short circuit out my project and that's no fun for anyone. All right, now we're going to build our circuit using maker tape. Maker tape is such a great uh, little invention. It's a nylon conductive tape. It is leaps and bounds better than copper foil tape for a lot of different reasons. It is conductive all the way through, so you can overlap two pieces and it, the electricity goes straight through it. Um, it. You cannot tear it. You actually do need to cut it. Uh, it is just a lot more, um, a lot more forgiving and a lot more reliable than copper foil tape. It also is on, mine is on our little handy holder. You can print out these 3D files. Uh, you can find those files at browndoggadgets.com. So we've got the 3D printed holder for the small tape rolls, as well as the big tape rolls. And if you saw it earlier, my little battery holder, which they are so handy to keep things organized and all in one place. We gotta fill that one up for you. You have some empty slots there. I mean, do we? <laughs> yeah, I filled mine. I keep just pulling the batteries out of projects after I'm done and just putting them back. Okay. Because why not? Yeah. All right, so I can do this one of two ways. I can figure out how long I want my strips and cut it and then add it to my project, or I can just peel and start working. Um, I know I'm gonna need a piece to go straight down in the middle here. So I'll make one about that long. Now to get the, the tape off of the backing, we suggest holding it about a centimeter from the top. And then you just take the pad of your finger and pull down a couple times and it should pull away from that backing. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you've got it, it really is fairly easy. All right. So I'm going to use this piece to hold down my short LED leg, and I can put it right over that LED leg because it is conductive all the way through. So it will hold my leg in place as well as help conduct the electricity. So I'm gonna run my nail along the sides of the maker tape along that LED leg just to make sure it's making really good contact. And I came really close up here to that long LED leg I do want to make sure that I start my next tape path for the long one a little bit farther away so they don't touch because I do not want to short circuit my project. Now since this is the short LED leg, which is negative, I want to make sure that the negative side of my battery is touching that path. I'm going to attach my battery with a loop of maker tape. So it's about an inch of maker tape. I wouldn't go much longer than that. If you have it too much, it can mushroom around the sides of the battery, and then you can short circuit your project that way. So it's literally just a loop of tape with the maker tape with the sticky side facing out. And then I'm going to put that right on top of this path here and put my battery on top of that, just like so. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with my long leg, but then I'm going to bring it down most of the way and I'm going to leave a gap in my tape. That's where I'm going to build in my switch. I'm gonna rub my nail along the sides of that just to make sure it has a great connection. And like I said, I want to build in a gap. I do not want my light, my LED to be on all the time. I want to be able to control it. So, and you know, I think I want my gap a layer about there. I do love that you can just overlap two pieces of tape and it works. Oh yeah. I'm gonna take a small piece of tape keeping a little bit of a gap. I don't want a huge gap. I don't need a big gap. That's just more of a gap for the, the maker tape to bridge for it to work. Tiny just gap, a, tiny little gap. A tiny really thing. small gap is all you need. And then I'm going to take this tape path onto the top of the battery. Just 
just like that. Now, since I have a gap there, my LED does not light up. Before I build my switch, I kind of want to just make sure it works. I'm going to take a small piece of tape with the metal side down, since I still have the backing on it. And I'm just going to put it over that gap and hold it there and just check, just to make sure that I've got everything set up correctly and make sure that I can actually get my LED to light up when I bridge that gap. Perfect. Yeah. Since I can, I'm ready to make my switch. A switch can really be made out of pretty much anything. I've just got this chunk of more of this same paper, this cardstock, and I need it to be at a better angle because it's irritating me. Appreciate that. Yep, you're welcome. All right, so what I did is I just made a longer rectangular piece. Um, a lot of the switches that we've built in projects lately have been a lever switch. This is gonna be more of like a push button switch. So what I'm going to do is just kind of make myself a little bit of a bridge. So I'm gonna fold it up with a little bit of a Z, backward Z on that side. And another little fold on that side. And what I'm going to do is create a pad of maker tape on the bottom side of this pad, this switch. That way, once I tape it down on top, when I push, it will come in contact and bridge that gap and cause my circuit to be a closed circuit. So I'm going to use that maker tape and just put maybe two pieces along the inside there. And I can actually use the one that I did use for testing, if I can find it amongst all my strips. It's a little longer than I want, but the great thing is I can just cut it. And I don't truly want to waste this little piece, so I'm just going to use it over here. Yeah. And cut a tiny little part for that section there. All right, there we go. So that's my little uh, like pad that I'm creating to help bridge that gap to turn this from an open circuit into a closed circuit. So I want to make sure I have good placement on this. I want to make sure that it's in a place where when I press it down in the middle, it does bridge that gap. And I'm not going to really have it sitting up too high. If I do, it's going to I'm going to really have to force it down. So I'm almost going to kind of spread out those things I bent to make it a little bit more flat. So there's a little bit of a gap there, but not a lot. And I'm just going to hold that down with some regular clear tape. Some non-conductive non tape. Non-conductive tape. You got it. Gotta make sure I'm gonna bridge that gap though. Can't let it slide away from me. His arms in my way. All right. So then you can see I've got that little bit of a gap. And then when I press down, it should complete the circuit. Oh yeah. And light up. There we go. That way I'm not burning out my battery unnecessarily and it just makes a really fun and engaging project so this is the light up robot toy and like i said there are so many different ways that you can create this toy so many different materials we do suggest something heavier like a heavy cardstock um, i don't think construction paper would hold up to this kind of project there's too much going on you could also for mine, I actually ended up hot gluing the pieces together just because hot glue stays really well. Um, if you wanted students to actually use a glue that needs to sit and wait for it to dry, I would almost have them build the circuit first and then glue all the pieces together and let it sit overnight. Um, that way they don't have to come back to that same project. They can finish the whole thing, but it will still dry and not fall apart on them. 
So this is our light up robot toy. Look at, they're all friends. Cool. Yay. Awesome. Uh, if you decide to make the project, we would love to see your creations. Just remember that we would love to be tagged. So if you do post something on social media, tag us so we can see what you're creating with your students. Uh, also, all of these templates, like we said, are on browndoggadgets.com. This project, besides using some sort of cardboard, can be made with our paper circuits kit. It's got the LEDs, batteries, and maker tape that's all in here, everything that you would need for that. Also, if you've never used maker tape before, you can also request a sample pack. So our sampler kit has maker tape. It has uh, five different projects in here that you can create. Uh, it just gives you a great idea of some of the things that we do here at Brown Dog Gadgets. So you can go to browndoggadgets.com to request your free sample pack. Other than that, we hope you enjoyed and you build the Light Up Robot toy. Uh, next week, we've got some fun projects for Thanksgiving, which is around the corner. Some Thanksgiving cards, as well as a cyber turkey mask. It's Pete's sure. favorite project, uh, I heard. No. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yay! <laughs> Um, thank you for bearing with us today. If you ended up coming back to our live stream, if you're seeing this later, we'll try to make sure both parts are together. And as always, check us out at browndoggadgets.com. Email us at help at browndoggadgets.com if you've got any questions. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.